Let's do Crazy Town because, as I said in the top of the show, the second segment, the thing that caught my attention, obviously, is the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Really, there's only been one year that the White House Correspondents' Dinner was anything that was relevant, and that, of course, is the year that Imus went down there and smoked the Clintons. <laughs> smoked them so bad that the White House, the next day, reached out to C-SPAN and asked them not to rerun it. <laughs> <laughs> Because the I man went down there and took care of business like he said he would. And other than that year, the correspondence dinner has been pretty much, well, pathetic. Especially in the last 20 years, 10 years, whatever, 15 years. It's been just a bunch of clapping seals kissing everybody's ass. It's just ridiculous. So, But this year was Trevor Noah and, of course, with Biden there. It's always going to be an adventure. So here it is, Crazy Town Correspondence Dinner. With Biden and Trevor Noah. Roll it, Chi. And a special thanks to the 42% of you actually applauded. I'm really excited to be here tonight with the only group of Americans with a um, lower approval rating than I have. This is the first um, time uh, the president attended this dinner in six years. Yeah. We had a horrible plague, followed by two years of COVID. If my predecessor came to this dinner this year, now that would really have been a real coup. The very first president to attend the White House Correspondents Center was Calvin Coolidge in 1924. I'd just been elected to the United States Senate. Jill is with me tonight. Jilly, she did say the other day, instead of introducing myself as Jill Biden's husband, maybe to introduce myself as her roommate. You're famous for interviewing, you're interviewing skills. Well, he's bombing. Billy, <laughs> you should know what you're doing, pal. You know it, you know it well. And you should, I think, you should hope meets the press. Maybe they start to watch it again. I told my grandkids and Pete Buttigieg they could stay up late and watch this show tonight. We come here to answer a very important question in everybody's mind. Why in hell are we still doing this? <laughs> Another question about whether we should gather here tonight because of COVID. Well, well news himself, didn't he? we're here to show the country that we're getting through this pandemic. Plus, everyone had to prove they were fully vaccinated and boosted. Just contact your favorite Fox News reporter. They're all here, vaccinated and boosted. I came to office with an ambitious agenda and I expected it to face stiff opposition in the Senate. I just hoped it would be from Republicans. But I'm not worried about the midterms. I'm not worried about them. We may end up with more partisan gridlock, but I'm confident we can work it out during my remaining six years in the presidency. I'm not really here to roast the GOP. That's not my style. Besides, there's nothing I can say about the GOP that Kevin McCarthy hasn't already put on tape. Ronald Reagan said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear this wall down. That one's okay. Today's Republicans say, tear down Mickey Mouse's house. But Republicans Oof. Oof. <laughs> seem to support one Crickets fellow. Crickets on that one. Some guy named Brandon. He's having a really good year. <laughs> Poison. That's pretty good. He's running through our democracy. He still doesn't get it, though. No. <laughs> wall. All this taking place with this information massively on the rise. The First Amendment grants a free press extraordinary protection. But with it comes, as many of you know, a very heavy obligation to seek the truth as best you can. There's incredible pressure on you all to deliver heat instead of shed light because the technology is changing so much. The system is changing. What? American democracy is not a reality show. I'm going to turn this over to Trevor now, strap myself into my seat. It is my great honor to be speaking tonight at the nation's most distinguished super spreader events. Do you read any of your own newspapers? I mean, I expect this from Sean Hannity, but the rest of you, what are you doing here? The second someone offers you a free dinner, you all turn into Joe Rogan. I mean, Dr. Fauci dropped out. That should have been a pretty big sign. Fauci thought it was too dangerous to come tonight. Pete Davidson thinks it's okay. Just chill, we're celebrating, we're out. You know, get comfortable. Not too comfortable, Jeffrey Tubin. not too comfortable. You know what, so what, Jeffrey? You made a mistake, you whipped it out in front of your coworkers. That's the first step to winning a Grammy for Comedy Album of the Year. You're halfway there, my friend. Yeah, I might roast you gently, you know, like a pair of testicles on a Tucker Carlson special. What if I make like a really mean joke, you know, about like Kellyanne Conway? And then her husband rushes up on the stage and thanks me. You would never allow personal connections to affect your ability to be good journalists. Isn't that right, Chris Cuomo? Where is Chris, by the way? Is he? 
Zee here. Before people uh, order their Ubers home tonight, Governor Greg Abbott is generously providing free buses for the Telemundo table. We've got the media, we've got celebrities, basically oh, anyone been. who's been to Jeffrey Epstein's island. This is an exclusive oh, event. Ron DeSantis is here. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I'm actually surprised that he found the time. You know, he's been so busy trying to outmaneuver Trump for 2024. I see you, Ron. Blaming Trump for the lockdowns, distancing yourself from the vaccines that Trump created with his own two hands. Nobody knew how to make vaccines until I made them. Beautiful, beautiful vaccines. Nobody knew how. Not even Fauci. You see, what I like about Ron DeSantis is, is like if Trump was the original Terminator. De Sanctus is like the T-1000. You know, you're smarter than him. You're slicker than him. You can walk down ramps. First you ban the math textbooks, then nobody knows how to count the votes. Boom, my man, ha ha ha. Whenever there's a disaster anywhere in the world, Chef Jose is there, yeah. which I guess is why he's sitting exactly. at the CNN table tonight. We all get to be in the Oof. same room as the most powerful man in the United States. So let's give it up for Joe Manchin, everybody. You know, I was a little confused about why me, uh, but then I was told that you get your highest approval ratings when a biracial African guy is standing next to you. So uh, uh, I'm glad that I could uh, do my part. <laughs> Ever since you've come into office, things are really looking up. You know, gas is up, rent is up, food is up, <laughs> everything. Well, Joe thinks no, it that's really hysterical. has been great. Uh -huh. a tough first year for you, that. Mr. President. Hilarious. President Biden's exactly lack of a filter does get him into hot water sometimes. You know, last month he caused a huge international incident saying that Vladimir Putin should be removed from power. It was very, very upsetting to Russia. Yeah, until someone explained to them that none of the stuff Biden wants actually gets done. Really dark times since he took <laughs> office. The COVID pandemic. The war in Ukraine, the launch of CNN Plus. Glad you could make it tonight, Jen. It's nice that you're willing to come over here and risk getting COVID for like, what, the 10th time now? <laughs> Let me ask, how do you keep getting COVID, Jen? Moving to MSNBC is gonna be a big switch up for you because right now your current job is to make the Biden administration look as good as, as possible, you know, at all costs. Now you're gonna be at MSNBC and you're gonna have to, um, you'll be fine, actually. Yeah, I, I love watching your shows. You know, when Trump was in office, your shows were all about how bad he Pretty was. Good. And now that Biden's in office, your show is all about how bad Trump was. Consistency is important. We appreciate that. We really do. Let's give it up for the White House press pool. Every day you demand answers on the pressing issues of the day. And then Fox News asks about Hunter Biden. People need to be held accountable if they're using their dad's name to get ahead in life. And I can't think of anyone better to ask about that than Peter Ducey. Yeah. Wherever he is. Chris Wallace laughed at that joke, right? Fox News is sort of like a waffle house. Yeah, it's relatively normal in the afternoon, but as soon as the sun goes down, drunk lady named Janine threatening to fight every Mexican who comes in. You can't throw me out, I know the real president. Chuck Todd is here. Chuck, you here? Yeah, how you doing? I'd ask a follow-up, but I know you don't know what those are. Where's Jeff Zucker, by the way? Also couldn't make it? What's, what's happening over there? Oh. Apparently Jeff got fired after he tried to keep his workplace relationship a secret, which is weird because if he really didn't want anyone to know about it, he could have just made a show about it on CNN+. Plus. <laughs> I know, I know, it's so sad. CNN+, Plus gone, but forgotten. This is truly the golden era of conspiracy theories. Whether it's the right wing believing Trump can still win the 2020 election or the left believing Joe Biden can still win the 2024 election. <laughs> Please be careful leaving tonight. We all know this administration doesn't handle evacuations well. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much. That's the, wow. best, one. Oh, that's the best one of the whole night. That's the best one. That was a good one. Wow. wow. Hey, thank God he had writers for him because he's not funny. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was good writing. Some good. No, some he's, uh, he's pretty much lame. A he couple good lame. singers in there. I I can appreciate taking out both sides in a night like this. Yeah, yeah. But just take out both sides, and he, I guess he kind of did. Couple yeah, he, couple good he, ones he had there. A couple that landed. Yeah, there's good. a couple that landed there. Mm -hmm. Biden was awful though.